Hello everyone, Simon here with pack to live and this is a short video just to highlight the existence of something very useful, uh, which are compressible dry bags. Now, I know for some of you, you will have seen these before, you'll know what they are, you may even use them yourself, and so you probably just clicked off or didn't even click on this video in the first place, and that's fair enough. Um, I'm making this video because when I was at the Bushcraft Show last month, I had a, a surprising number of people come up to me and ask me what the bags were that I was carrying certain items of my kit in. Uh, they could see my little rolls of, of things like sleeping bags and wool blankets and my, even my clothing, uh, spare clothing, were all stored in various compressible dry bags that I was pulling out of my pack. And I had a lot of people ask me, what are they? Well, the answer is quite simple. They are a dry bag with compression straps. Literally, that's what they are. Uh, they're fully waterproof. These are made by Exped. I'll put a link in the description to the various sizes and shapes of them that I found so far. But to give you some idea, uh, this is the small one, which comes in red and only red for the non super light edition. The super light editions of all of these have um, a thin cord instead of the typical uh, slide lock or compression lock straps and webbing. So the small comes in red. Now I found this is perfect for things like um, summer sleeping bags uh, or two season sleeping bags, wool blankets, uh, brilliant for spare clothing, changes of clothing. And of course uh, they double up as a pillow if you put a little bit of air back into them. Um, I say before that they're just dry bags with compression straps on them. It's not really quite that simple. They also have, and I'll show you this here clearly, a drain hole to let the air out, okay? So the idea is that when you're compressing them, if you leave this drain plug open, all of the air can be squeezed out and you end up with a very highly compressed uh, bag of, of whatever's inside of it. Now, if you're wondering why that's useful, well, first of all, of course, you get the saving of space by compressing everything as much as you can and taking all of the air out of it. Why should your pack contain air, it doesn't need air in the pack. So squeezing all the air out obviously saves space, but it does have one very important additional benefit. When you put air in a dry bag, if that dry bag with its contents inside and the air in there gets dropped into water, yes, it will float. But at the same time, the escape or the desire for the air to escape through the water, especially if it gets submerged in any way, will cause water to be drawn in through any particular weakness in the seam. Now, generally speaking, when you buy a brand new dry bag, they are pretty well tight. I mean, they're pretty seam tight. But over time, when you're folding them, increasing them, and throwing them in your bag, eventually those watertight seals start to break down a little bit. And while it's enough to keep the rain off or um, a bit of surface water, say if you spill a cup of, of drink down one, that won't go in. There's very little chance of that. If they do end up in a river or a lake or a body of water, or even a large puddle, um, if the seals are breached in any way, that water will be drawn in as the air escapes. If there's no air in the bag, or almost no air in the bag, that's not going to happen because there's nothing to draw the water in. So you might get a damp patch in one tiny area where there's a, a weakness in a seam, but you will never have a situation where water is drawn in and saturates everything in the bag. Um, they're not rated as submersible, I should point that out. They're not designed to be submerged, but of course, anything you're putting in a dry bag, you want it to stay dry. So taking the air out of a bag, a dry bag, uh, that can save you from losing critical items of kit if it were to end up, you know, say a river crossing or you're wading out. I don't know why you'd be wading in a lake, for example, with a dry bag with you, but if you were, or if you're walking along a body of water along the side of it and something falls out, you pack in a dry bag and goes in the water. You get the idea. If it ends up in the water, you do not want it to get wet. That's why it's in a dry bag. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown on the different types because believe me, there are a lot. So you've got different sizes. We've got the small here. I believe this is 13 litres and it's red. That's how I know it's the small. It also says S on the label there. Uh, as I say, this is big enough for wool blankets, um, or certainly the kind that I use. Obviously, your uh, Polish Army wool blankets are quite a lot bigger. You probably need something like this, which is the large. 
I can't remember off the top of my head what the capacity of these is in litres. I will put it on the screen. I think it's around 30 or something in that region. Um, and these are very large, a lot larger than I was expecting. I mean, look, it's all the way down from my top of my head right down to my belt. So a sizable dry bag. Now, obviously, you have to roll a certain minimum amount of that up. But even when you roll the three mandatory minimum rolls, that's still that's still profoundly massive. However, even these are useful. I should point that out. So I, I bought these originally, the big ones, and then I bought the small ones to see where the middle ground would be for me. And I'm actually using a combination of them in my in my kit. So my down sleeping bag goes in one of these and there is actually room to spare. It compresses so small uh, that it, it goes in my sleep compartment with loads of room to spare. I also put the green layer of my modular sleep system in one of these and use that to supplement uh, separately and use that to supplement my down bag in the spring and the autumn where there's a slight bit more chill in the air but not too cold so it adds comfort basically I put the down bag inside the green modular sleep system synthetic bag and I end up adequately warm more than adequately warm on the slightly chillier but non freezing nights okay now the large bags I use for larger sleeping bags usually um, and if I'm doing like a week-long trip uh, not necessarily even an outdoor or camping trip if I'm traveling for business for example I will actually bundle my clean clothing in one of these compress it dump it in my car and then all my clothes are compressed there's no air in there there's not it's not going to develop a musty odor or anything like that because there's no no air for that to breed in and I know my clothes will stay dry regardless of what happens I can grab the dry bag and go so they're brilliant for large amounts of clothing they're brilliant for very large winter sleeping bags arctic bags or the US modular sleep system which I actually have compressed into this one right here Okay, so that is my US modular sleep system compressed into the bag that I, on which I've written in Sharpie number one, so I remember which one's which. Okay. Now, I mentioned before different sizes, what they're useful for. There are also different compression methods. We have on this bag here, just put this one out of the way for a minute. On this bag here, we have the compression straps running horizontally. So the modular sleep system I just showed you there uses the horizontal compression straps to make a long, thin sausage shape. But then we also have what are called telecompression um, dry bags, which have a vertical compression strap. So you pull them down and it makes a short fat shape, which I can show you right here. So this is a cheap winter synthetic sleeping bag. Uh, it's actually not that heavy. I say cheap because I got it for 50 quid on a, an out of season sale at a go outdoors um, quite a long time ago. No, it wasn't. It was a Cotswold outdoors in uh, Cambridge, I believe. Anyway, now because it's a smaller bag and in this case I want it to pack down into, a, into the entirety of a sleep compartment on its own, uh, I pack it like this in a telecompression stuff sack so it forms a fat, short uh, ball essentially that can be shoved in my sleep compartment and it occupies the full space comfortably and um, so that's the benefit of a telecompression clothing I tend to put in the uh, horizontal compression bags like my modular sleep system um, so I make a long thin roll out of them I can then strap those to the outsides of packs so from my perspective the way I do this uh, if it's going in a bag telecompression tends to be better with the large ones um, if it's going on the outside of the bag, horizontal compression seems to be better uh, for the big ones as well. The small size uh, compressible dry bags, the red ones, uh, I can use either. Personally, I go for the horizontal compression because I found them easier to get my hands on than telecompression at that size. Uh, but either way, you're going to end up with a small, very compact, air, sort of air-free and watertight roll. Okay, so I'm going to put links in the description below to the ones that I've bought. Uh, I got them all on Amazon. Uh, their prices range from around 15 quid all the way up to about 40, 50, depending on the size and where you buy them from. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is link you to the best prices for each size. And I'll have like, you know, small, 
medium, large, and then I'll have like uh, standard compression or horizontal compression rather, and telecompression, just to make it easier for you to find the right ones if you are interested in them. Uh, I love them, I use them all the time. Uh, I mean, I've been using them for over a year now and uh, I won't go back. Uh, they weigh bugger all. I don't remember the exact weight, but they don't weigh any more really than a normal dry bag uh, for the most part. They do do a super light version. And just for the heck of it, I'll link those in the description below as well. But what worries me with super light gear is when you have the words compression and super light together, I worry that I will try to compress things to the maximum. And with it being super light gear, that it might be fragile enough to break. So I haven't tried that yet. Um, I probably will, probably this year, actually. I'll get my hands on one and, and see how far I can take it without breaking it. In fact, I probably will do a video on that when I do it the first time, just to capture the moment. Who knows? But one other thing I should point out is that um, I've been moving away from a rucksack uh, setup and more towards a pack frame setup, or what I call packless camping. And the reason that I invested in the dry bags in the first place is because obviously you need to contain gear. You can't have individual items loose, strapped to a frame, rolling about everywhere, not held together, changing the center of mass and potentially falling off and getting lost. And of course, at the same time, gear, certain gear, in particular sleep gear has to be, and clothing, have to be protected from rain. It's England, it's Britain, it rains all the time. Today is probably one of the few sunny, truly sunny days we will have uh, this summer. I'm probably embellishing that a little, a little bit. It's been a nice week and hopefully the next week will be nice too. But you get the idea. It's Britain. It rains a lot. So dry bags are required. It's just the way it is. Do not make the mistake, uh, which I've made before, of thinking that a stuffed sack for a sleeping bag is rainproof. They tend not to be. Uh, I actually got a down bag wet because it was in my pack and I was hiking in incredibly heavy rain for a very long time. It was a four hour hike. And when I got to where I was camping, I took my sleeping bag out and holy hell, it was soaking wet. Uh, now, if I didn't have the means to dry it using a fire and very carefully tending to it under a tarp, I, I would have be probably been in quite a bit of trouble. Fortunately for me, I, it wasn't too wet, but much longer in the rain and it would definitely have been too wet for me to use. Okay, so dry bags are an absolute must. If you're gonna buy dry bags, don't just buy cheap, normal dry bags. Get yourself something that's gonna end up saving space, that's gonna end up protecting your gear, and that gives you the advantages that you get with a rucksack. The additional advantage of knowing that it's rainproof is lighter than a rucksack and can be strapped to a frame or put in a rucksack with no problems whatsoever. So I'm using these on pack frames, they're just strapped vertically and they're usually two rows thick. I've got a dry bag with my sleeping bag, a dry bag with my supplemental one um, sleeping bag if I need it, uh, depending on the time of year and the extremes that I'm likely to encounter. Another dry bag with my changes of clothing, another dry bag with my food, another dry bag with my cook kit, a uh, dry bag with my fire kit, and then I have another bag um, which goes inside a dry bag with all my tools. So my knives, my saw and all that stuff go in. Um, anything that isn't being mounted to the exterior of the pack, basically. So flashlights, all my tools go in one bag that is then inserted into a dry bag to keep it protected and dry. Uh, it's a system that's working well for me. There will be a video on that coming up very soon uh, at the time of recording. If you're watching this in the future, I will link that video below as well. At the time of recording, that video hasn't yet been made. Uh, I'm waiting for an item from America to round out the way I do my uh, packless camping. And when that arrives, I'm gonna be coming out and shooting that video. Should be in the next week or two. Anyway, so there's a look at compressible dry bags. I personally think that they are a gigantic improvement over conventional dry bags. It's a major step forward for me. Uh, I wish I'd known about them from the start. They make all the sense in the world. It's the simplest thing you can think of once you know they exist and that they're out there and you can buy them. Uh, but I stumbled upon them looking for replacement dry bags on Amazon. I was like, oh, compressible. Yes, definitely must do that. And so uh, I won't be going back. Anyway, hopefully you found this video useful and the information. Uh, if you already knew about dry bags and compressible dry bags, sorry to have wasted your time if this hasn't taught you anything new 
but uh, for those of you who weren't aware of them or even never considered the possibility of them, might be an eye-opener, might be a, a good improvement to the way you carry your kit. All that remains is for me to say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.